Last time on HTML Canvas, Radu showed you how to use the context to draw a shape, line by line. Then he used the arc method to draw a circle, and showed you can draw a part of a circle by playing with the last values between 0 and 2 pi. Finally, he used a quick way to draw a rectangle. Now get ready, third lesson's about to start. Gonna code, debug and have fun, coding with Radu. Coding with Radu, gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu, let's code now. Let's begin with a quick canvas setup. I remind you that here I'm typing the bare minimum to have a canvas on our web page, but really, when making actual projects, you should follow my advice from the first lecture in this series. So here I just added a canvas with ID my canvas, uh, 400 width and height in pixels, and I made it have a blue background so that we see it on the page. Let's start adding JavaScript code like this inside of the script tags and uh, access here my canvas from the document like this and get also access to the 2D drawing context of the canvas, like so. And we'll begin with a very simple shape, a rectangle. I'm just going to start a rectangle from 100, 100, the top left corner with the width and height of 200, like this, and stroke. We practiced these things last time. Let's save the file, refresh the page, and we see now a blue canvas of 400 by 400 and a square of 200 by 200 in the center of this canvas. But how about styling this square differently? We can do a number of things here before we call stroke. For example, we can set the line width to be higher, maybe 10, for example. Let's save the file, refresh, and now you can see it's much thicker. You can put any value you want here, try experimenting, maybe 70, for example. But that's not all we can do. We can also change the stroke style to yellow. Save the file, refresh the page, and now it changed to yellow. So we're drawing yellow lines now, very thick lines, apparently. And we can also fill this shape. We can type here ctx.fill, like this, save, refresh, and now the default color is black. But you can change this as well. I just go here and type ctx fill style. For example, we set this to red. And now it looks like this. Now this blue, yellow and red colors are great if you want to draw the flag of Romania. But what if you want to use other colors as well? Well, good news is that we have 16,777,216 colors to choose from. The bad news is I have to teach you how these work and it's not obvious. So let's see. We're gonna visit this website that has a really nice color picker. You can select pretty much any color you want by playing with these sliders. And on the right here, you actually get four different ways of representing colors. And I'm not gonna explain these last two ones, but I will focus on these first two ways from here. So let's choose a primary color like this, red color from here, and move this dial all the way up like this. Now, as I'm moving this, Pay close attention to what happens here with the green and the blue components. So these stand for red, green, and blue, and they are actually the values of the pixels I showed you earlier. So as I'm moving this, 
you can see that red is still maximum, but green and blue are turning off as I'm moving this to the right. Let's see, is this true? Let's look at this with the microscope. Now here, where it's white, all red, green and blue lights are on, as bright as they can be. But as we move towards this red part, what happens is that the green and blue lights are dimming and eventually they shut down entirely. That's why we see red, because the green and blue lights are off. And that's what we see here in numbers. So 255 is the maximum brightness of these small lights. And zero means they are off. So in the white section, all of them are maximum values. And as we go to the right, the green and blue values, the green and blue lights are turning themselves off. And that's what colors actually are. Those small lights just turn on at different intensities and create a color that looks like this, for example. So if we like this color that we are looking at now, we can input it in our code directly by specifying this red, green and blue value exactly, like this. I'm going here where it says blue and I'm going to type RGB and in parentheses like this, let's put the value of red, which is 50, the value of green, which is 228, and the value of blue, which is 202. Let's save this file, go back to our project and refresh the page. So now the blue changed to exactly that color that we were looking at previously. And you can do that here in JavaScript as well. For example, yellow can be RGB of red is maximum, so 255, green is maximum, 255, and blue is turned off, so zero. If I save this and refresh, then it's going to look exactly the same. We have entered here yellow, but using this RGB syntax. And if you want a different kind of yellow, you can play around with tools like this one, select the one that you like, and then input those values exactly. Like 223, 226, and 60. And now the yellow changes color a little bit. Okay, but what is this thing? It says hex right here. So you will see these a lot when people are coding actually. And hex stands for hexadecimal, which is just another way of writing numbers. You use this hashtag in front to represent when a number is in hex form. So df from here is the same as 223. You don't believe me? Let's open up the calculator. In Windows, this also has an option for programmer right here. And let's type in 223 for red. And you can see this hex is df right here. And if you're going to type in 226, hex is e2. And if you're going to type in 60, then hex is going to be 3c. So it is true. And the reason why letters also appear in this numbering system is that digits in hexadecimal start off the same as in decimal with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But then it has few more digits up to f and they are named as A, B, C, D, E, F. F stands for 15. So hexadecimal has 16 digits and after nine, they start to be counted using letters. But you don't really have to worry about all that. Nobody does these things in their mind or using calculators. 
What people normally do is pick a color that they're interested in using and then maybe they copy this hex form from here and they paste it here in the code where they want to use it. Save the file, go back to our project, refresh the page and red changed a little bit. It wasn't that significant. Let's get a darker value for it like this. Save the file, go back, refresh the page, and now you can see it better. So knowing these things, you should be able to use any color you want. Well, at least out of the 16,777,216 that are available because you have 256 possibilities for each of the RGB components. But yeah, anyway, still many to choose from. So have fun and see you guys.